Hi, today I will be talking about the implementation of the uh, elastic element and in particular I will focus on boundary conditions. So we have a tutorials and then when you go to the vector field problems and you choose uh, uh, linear elasticity, I will, will be talking about this problem. Very often when you solve the practical problems, industrial problems or complex um, engineering problems in, in science, you have to deal with the complex sets of the boundary conditions. So if you want to um, have a pathway to impact in such a way that you are uh, scientists who work in, which works on the different um, numerical methods and you want to have that your methods are applied to solve the practical problems, your final code, which using your method, has to handle zoo of the different boundary conditions. And typically what happens that if you solve really tough problems, you have, um, you have to deal with the boundary condition, which is not typical. And in that case, you have to have a special implementation which handles this specific type of the boundary condition. And the challenge is how we can add a new type of the boundary condition without them modifying um, main code. Uh, that has a, a motivation for that is that when we test the code, we know that it works. So by, modif by modifying uh, the code in any, in any way, we compromise its integrity. So we have to find a way that how we can add the new features like new boundary conditions without the compromising integrity of the code itself. In our implementation, we want to create the code such that the one source code uh, can be compiled in two variants. In the 2D variant, and 3D variant. How this is done? If you go to the decision which variant you want to have is made at the compilation time. How you choose the variant, you go in, you in, in, in your CMake file, you have a, you have a one source code, but you have a two compilations, 2D and 3D. The compila which, compil uh, which compilation is selected, it depends on the variable, executable dimension, which is set to two, and executable dimension, which is set to three. In, those, in this particular case. And one source code generate two variants, 2D and 3D. So in practice, assuming that the core library is well tested, so it's enough for you to test the code in 2D version, and then you should expect that 3D version should be automatically as well. Valid. How this is done? Uh, this is done by select creating empty class, which has uh, two specializations, 2D and 3D. And then now when compiler variable is provided, executable dimension, uh, the one of those variables, one of those options is selected over here. So then what we seeing over here, we have a domain element. So element which is responsible for integrating the, the, the bod, uh, uh, interior is chosen whether to be a volume that imply hex, 
tetrahedron. In some cases, that can imply the different types of the elements like prisms or wedges. But uh, for most of the cases, we'll focus on this part. We'll need other types of the elements which will mix uh, meshes. Or when you will choose the phase element to integrate the domain, you will have uh, two options, quad or triangle. And then you can see you have a uh, domain you select phase or volume. That's automatically applies for boundary. So when you have a 2D problem, the 2D problem, the boundary will have edge. And in 3D problem, on the boundary, you can have a quad and triangle. So decision which variant you have, you, what mesh is expected, expected, whether the mesh is expected to be 3D mesh or 2D mesh, is selected at the compilation time. But um, you can, at the compilation time, by setting constant variable, we can select the assembly type, or you can select the you can select the integration time. And for example, we can have assembly time by pet using pet C, or we can have a special specific implementation on GPUs, and then some implementations which we don't know at the moment, or they're not uh, yet implemented. But the key thing is that if we implement the, all the components below separately, test them separately, by changing that variable, we'll have automatically a new type of the compilation for a specific architecture, specific solvers, etc. The same thing, we here we select the Gauss integration, but for example, we can have a different types of integrations, like tensorial integration or specific integrations for bernstein brezy polynomials or Duffy integration. So the reason for choosing a different integrations will be uh, that um, we, can exp we, we can reduce the complexity of the problem. Currently, in the MOFM, we have, um, uh, we have up and running this type of integration and assembly. However, the final code, physical uh, codes which implement the physics should be agnostic to this choice. So when we add the new features, so physical codes should be automatically updated to do new possibilities which we have, which we plan to implement. So in other words, so in order to solve the problem, we have a series of task to perform. So each task, if you will zoom the task, for example, that task has own complexity of it. So it's a complex thing. So it has many elements, which has uh, some features, specific features, I then, um, um, is, is, is some like integral part, like a clock with its own complexities, which could be further separated on, on, on some small tasks. But from perspective of other blocks, and any other blocks is, as well, is a black box. So that way of the thinking about the code allow us to break down something which is complex into smaller parts, and then we can tackle part, each part one by one, and then we text parts one by one. So in this particular case, which we have over here, we have, uh, we have this pipeline of the task which we want to perform.
But in fact, every task which we have over here has, a, as you can say, it has many different variants. And at the compilation time, we select different pathways how we can solve the problem. So we have infinite number of the possibilities how we can assemble the problem. Behind every possibility is a specific specialization or template how the problem should be solved depending on the, which is depends on the dimension which we choose or assembly type or integration type. But not, that's not all. So in MOFM, we have uh, two ways how we can implement the problem. One is by using the, the core interface. And another way uh, is uh, using a simple interface. Core interface allow us for great flexibility and um, allow us to solve um, extremely complex problems. Simple interface uh, allow to us to implement the problem fast. So typically we will use the simple, simple interface when we're dealing with the, some multi-physics um, PD coupled problem or mixed problem, but this problem is defined on the whole domain, which is defined by the mesh. And it's, it has a um, one physics on the boundary, one physics on the mesh. Core interface allow to do a much more sophisticated cases that, for example, on the part of the mesh, you run the Navier-Stock equations. On the part of the mesh, you have a um, solid mechanics problem, or, or you have um, on another part of the mesh, you have a thermal problem only. Um, and then you can run the different, you can have uh, some physics which is running on the boundary, uh, like diffusion of the some process diffusion process on the boundary. You have uh, some processes in the volume. Uh, you can you can make a complex case. So what we I I talking about that because uh, in MOFM uh, you can have you you creating so called finite element instances, which and then you can create the several of those instances, and then for example you can create the finite element instance to for. Uh, uh, Navier-Stock equations for some solid problem, depending what you have, and then you can split those those physics on the right hand side and the left hand side, and exactly the same these physics uh, left hand side or right hand side. But if you have one PD, uh, which is potentially coupled, it's much um, uh, uh, recommended version, which is applied in the simple interface, is to split your, create the, the finite element instances in such a way that we have a finite domain, finite element instance, which has two variants, left-hand side, right hand side and boundary finite element instance which is again left hand side and the right hand side instance in addition we can have a skeleton 
and exactly the same speed. But so then finite element decide in that case where you integrate, whether you integrate in the domain and whether, whether you integrate on the boundary. And second part of it, name of it, is where to you integrate into the domain or to the boundary. So with that at hand, what we can have when we have a finite element instances, and in this particular case, we'll have four types of the finite element instances, because we'll have a finite element instance for domain and boundary, and each of those will have a two variants. So then, when we select the solver, and then in, in, in MOFEM, we can select the, um, the solver, linear solver, let's say KSP PETC solver. We can choose the SNES solver. Or we can select the time solver. With the time solver, we is associated discrete manager. And then we have implementation of the MOFEM, implementation of the discrete manager, PETC. Petsy discrete manager. So MOFM discrete manager in turn allow us to push those instances of the domain FE. Let me draw it differently. We can push the instances, maybe I will draw it on this side, because we don't need that anymore. So we can create the discrete manager, which is MOFM discrete manager. And MOFM discrete manager, to MOFM discrete manager, we add those our elements. Domain LHS Bondare and Bondare. So now, when the solver, when the KSP solver want to solve the problem, it will ask the discrete manager to for a matrix on the right hand side, for example, matrix A. It will ask discrete manager to provide its matrix F, and then we will solve problem for X for the degrees of freedom in this particular case. So so part of the responsibility of the discrete manager is to create the matrix with the right structure, spice structure, and create the right hand side vector, which right the structure, which is distributed on many on several CPUs, if we have a, a parallel problem. Uh, and then the domain LHS and domain RHS is responsible to fill that matrix with the right numbers to perform the integration. Now the problem is at that point. So how the element instance knows how to integrate our matrix, how to fill it with the numbers. So finite element implementation in MOFEM is problem is physics agnostic. So finite element uh, implementation, it's, it's provide the integration rule, but for example, domain. But it has, user has to provide to the finite element operators 
we call it user data operators, which perform the sorting tasks. For example, when we have a dominant LHS, we have to perform, we have to make an integration for elastic problem, where we perform the integration like that, where U is a delta U is a virtual uh, displacement, D is uh, some hook matrix, and um, U, the gradient of U is a um, um, gradient of the displacement, approximation of the displacements. So I can put H over here to indicate that this is the discretized thing. Uh, this not has to be symmetrized because the vector uh, tensor D is a fourth order tensor which the, with the left, uh, uh, minor and major symmetry. But I don't want to talk about the physics. So in, th in that case, we have user operators, which we push to the uh, finite element. And those operators are, when they're uh, in most cases, are independent from the dimension. So it's, it's, they, they, they look exactly the same. It doesn't matter how, um, uh, whether you have a 2 or 3D uh, problem because they have a specialization or the templates for 2D and 3D problem. So how do all these things in, in happens in the practice? You can see it over here. So first thing which we select, I will maybe use the red color for doing that. Here, we, we choose the type of the element for domain and boundary. That is decided at the compilation time using this variable, which is set in CMake file. Uh, um, next thing, what we do, we have a type of the operator, which is the operator um, for uh, uh, this take, take op uh, this operator which inherit in some way information about the measure of the element what you understand by the it's vol whether it's a volume or the area next once you select that you have to select the particular form of the operator when you can see form operator over here and particular form of operator, for example, op k to assemble left-hand side matrix is chosen that is a form integrator, which is templatized by domain element operator, which is like you can see, it's depending on the, the type of the element in that way. It's depending on the assembly, which you choose over here, and depending on the integration, which you choose above. And then finally, what is the, 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 the last part? You select the operator type, which is op gradient, symmetric tensor gradient, exactly what you have over here. And we have a whole zoo of those operators. Then you select the, you choose what, whether it's a scalar base or vectorial base. For example, typical H1 base is a scalar base, but typical or L2 base, but H curl base is a vectorial base. You can have uh, as well the tensorial bases in some special cases, like uh, you have um, bubble functions, but this is completely a different story. You choose the dimension of the field and dimension of the space. But those two things can be um, different. For example, you can have a, a, a PDE, which happens on the mindfold, which is emerged in the 3D space. So uh, you can have um, various different combinations. I will not explain that parameter is, 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 depend, is deciding whether you you, your material is fully heterogeneous and 
in this particular case, and the D is different from one Gauss point to the other. Exactly similar story ap applies to the, uh, when we want to assemble internal force vector. So the internal force vector will be F int. So this will be integral over the boundary on, on over the domain, you have UH and times sigma when there is a, a sigma is a some implicit, implicit function, uh, explicit function of the displacements or implicit function of the displacements. So then you can see we have a two operators to act in the domain. That's that operators, they look like that for the elastic problem. But at that point, we just name those operators. We don't, don't push them. We just name the things based on the decisions which we choose over here. On top of that, now, this is the um, um, fundamental uh, part of that talk. Now I will try to tell you how to implement the boundary conditions such that, that the, the implementation of the boundary conditions can be extended. So what you see over here, I creating two classes, one domain basis and boundary basis, uh, boundary conditions. By domain uh, boundary conditions, I understand whole set of the body forces. And then you can imagine that I can have a gravity body force, but I can have, a, if I will have a rotating body, I will have a centrifugal rotating uh, uh, force. I can have a different variance of the body forces. Uh, I can have a body forces which emerge from the magnetics and so on. This is, at that point, I am not sure what those domain body forces will be. I just create them, the, the name for it, that like I create the like basket or set of the all the, the things. And then when I will I will put to that basket different different elements. I will put the potatoes, oranges, and the different fruits, different flavors of the boundary, domain boundary conditions. But at that point, I have no idea yet what it will be. So I just attach the name, and then what I do, um, it's an empty shell, and then I, I say that the, the domain bone I have, based on that name, I will have a two types of operators for, uh, I will have a type of the operator which will add something to right hand side. And then I will expect that my, I, this natural boundary condition associated with the body forces will work with my domain element, which I select, which will work with my assembly and it will work with my uh, integration. I don't know. I have no idea what it will be, but I assume that that will be somehow provided by including separate header file. Exactly the same uh, story will apply for the boundary, uh, boundary uh, conditions that I just select the name. And then again, I can have uh, on the boundary, I can have a zoo of the different scenarios. So I can have on the boundary, I can imagine in, in terms, I can have uh, some boundary conditions when I apply the pressure. So when I apply the pressure, I assume some traction, which is normal to the surface, or I can have a, uh, some boundary condition which apply the forces 
uh, in, in the certain way. In some cases, other cases, I can have a boundary condition, which is kind of the springs. It could be linear, non-linear springs. In if I, so you can see it's a different zoo of the bone. It's a skull zoo of the boundary conditions, which I can imagine. I can have a, some boundary conditions, which gives a, 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 a forces uh, by some complex analytical function, which uh, depending on x, uh, uh, which is function of the position conservative, non-conservative uh, forces. But at that point, I don't know exactly what those boundary conditions are. Some of those boundary conditions, like classical pressure of force boundary conditions, can be implemented in the, are already implemented in the core library. I just have to use them, but some of them I will have to implement. So what I will show you in this example, that how I will use boundary conditions like pressure and um, force, but I will implement, um, especially for this example, and I will show you how to add, add, add this, this kind of the Robin boundary conditions when I have a, a boundary conditions on the, on, on the springs. Of course, everything has to be implemented in such a way that is super easy that I select part of the boundary and then I say that is spring. I select part of the boundary, I say that is a body force. I, 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 I go to the qubit, for example, select the curve, and then I say that is a pressure applied on that curve. So if, if you want to create the practical code, which is used by others, um, it's not just only academic exercise. We create the methods which are used by others. We have to have this flexibility that from one hand, there could be easy code can be easy to use and can solve the not standard uh, problems. So before I will go, to the particular implementation of the boundary conditions, which you can find over here. I will go very quickly through the structure of the code. I have one thing um, to add, which add the complexity. In this implementation, I assume that I have a heterogeneous material so I can create the blocks of the material with the different properties. For example, I can add the hard inclusions. So I can have a problem which you can imagine looks like this. That I have a mesh with the inclusion. And then on, on one part of the boundary, I fix the displacement, I fix it at one point, and then on top I apply the pressure. Or I can have another problem that I have uh, this problem with the, I have a simple block when in body force in the spring. But the, the code itself is, 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 is generic. Um, is written in that that it can have infinite number of not finite but large number of the different mm, in inclusion with the different properties, and then I to that I can apply the different type of the boundary conditions. I, the code is generic, can solve the large set of the the elastic problems, and then can be easily extended as we can see. So the structure of the code main structure of the code looks like that. That is, is composed from the mesh reader, setup of the problem, boundary conditions, assembly, executing of the solver, post-processing, and we checking the results. We checking if the resi residual is equal to zero, just for a, 
uh, uh, consistency. So the main program, how it's it's at the end, is just we 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 uh, we read the parameters um, about the solver from param file. I will not talk about that at that point. We initialize the muffin, and then you can see we finalize the muffin. Then we register muffin discrete manager into the PetC. We creating Moab instance to um, create the mesh database. We have interface to mesh database that we modify the mesh or access the information to the mesh through that interface. We creating instance of the Moffem finite element database, and then we creating the Moffem interface to that database. And finally, we creating our example structure uh, instance, and then we run our problem. As you can see, the key thing is that you can notice that the code don't have any global variables, and then the structure to execute uh, uh, the program has 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 no uh, variables as well. Thanks to that, is a secure uh, code in the sense that we avoiding the state variables which influence the the code execution, and then. Um, uh, so scope of the variables which we which we have here is very is limited to the function and this is related of having those boxes which are like black boxes which are um, solving tackle the one problem at once and then you cannot access that black box from the outside and then if it, so then you can break it okay so I will start with the uh, with the going step by step. I I read the mesh that is easy. Then I add the field. I add the domain field displacement on the in the domain and boundary field in the boundary. Uh, I get from the command line what is the approximation order, and then I specify in addition the information about the geometry. So in both of them, uh, geometry of the body can be described by the field itself. And then in the order in which you describe the geometry can be up arbitrary order. So you, we can describe the shape of our body. For example, that when we will have a elements on the boundary, which describing its shape, those elements itself, not necessarily can be straight lines, segments, but could be a cubic function or can be functions of any arbitrary uh, polynomial order. And we using hierarchical basis to describe the geometry. Uh, but not always that is possible. For example, in qubit, we can generate the, the um, um, uh, six node triangles. So that is, uh, in that case, is a, is a second order geometry description. And then what really happens in that case, um, this function uh, from core interface allow the project the information from six node uh, triangles or uh, 10 node states on the our hierarchical base so we don't we never use the we don't we never use the mid nodes to describe the geometry before we will do that we project our description of the geometry in the in, in, in into the hierarchical polynomial orders and then in this case two, we select two, but it could be arbitrary order. Thanks to that, the, the description of the geometry is consistent and is, is exactly the same way how we describe the, the fields of the problem. Okay.
not at hand, we can we we start to go to the uh, uh, main problem of the so we have a boundary right hand side we have a boundary left hand side and then we have a boundary domain Uh, right hand side in this case and then what you can see over here first we 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 push them we have when we have finite element in its reference configuration for example we have a finite triangle or or quad it doesn't matter the software should work for both we have a reference element one one we have to project that element to the physical element in the mesh. So we have to push the base functions. We have to calculate the, the properly um, measure of, of the ele physical element and so on and so on. So that, that thing uh, is realized by those operators at HO higher order ops and high, higher order operators that 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 in principle should work for the arbitrary element even with the carved edges so at that point user is released from the need of the thinking how to do this push and then um it, this push of the base functions is depending as well on the space uh and the base and then it could be a quite complex process. Of course, you can look into those operators, and then even if you will um, look how this is done, so you can see that there are specializations for uh, for that pool depending which dimension you have, um, and then you can you can push those operators by uh, by hand. But here, this, this is just factory, which push the operators into your finite element instances, in case of the domain, into the bul in, in bulk. Okay. And then, uh, so then there are operators which calculate the Jacobian and the Gauss point, the operators which calculate the determinant, inverse of the Jacobian push base. That is the, like, backend of the finite element. But... The, how you push the things depending on the dimension of your element, dimension of the uh, dimension of the I don't uh, let me uh, check. Uh, dimension of the problem and dimension of the space. So what that means that you we, we you have a different variance because um as I said you can have a for example in 2D problem 2D problem can be emerged in 3D space. So you have this this specialization which handle all the possible um uh, combinations. I don't want to go into the details, but please notice I'm pushing that operators to manage the domain on the left hand side and to manage the uh, boundary. So the next thing which um, I have, I have a set of operators which I need to calculate the uh, uh, right hand side residual. Um, in this case, when I have non-homogeneous boundary conditions, so I calculate the gradient of the displacements. Uh, I symmetrize that gradient. I get the. I have operator for that. Then I I push the set of the operators, which I I will come back to that, which calculate the 
the hook equation uh, that is separate problem uh, you remember uh, we can solve the problem which is heterogeneous so we can have our inclusions with the have our different properties than matrix and then each inclusion can have be some some something different or you can have a inclusion which has some um, uh, zone and then it can be uh, emerged in the matrix so whole different scenarios are possible over here so this function like depending how you 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 make your mesh and then you set up your problem will result with the slight so for example you can see i have a material inclusion inside and i have a material um uh, material matrix and inclusion but many different possibilities so this set of the operator based on the where you we are in the mesh it will calculate the right value of this matrix uh, so uh, this is the the hook uh, uh, matrix which which many uh, um, um, manage the stiffness of the material so then based on that we can calculate the strain uh, stress based when we have when we provide we provide the strain and then we with that at hand we can calculate the internal force but this is somehow a close problem yeah so then we create the variables we using them and then it's that function is a black box uh, black box outside of that functions those variables are not visible and the information slow flow between those operators on the based on the variables which we uh, created over here so once we provide we provide that these functions are well tested uh, we can be sure that no matter what we do no one can damage the result uh, of those functions so in addition we push the operators which is you can see add add flux to pipeline so we this is like factories of the operators which push the series of operators uh, to car to apply the zoo of the different kind of the body forces which we don't know yet when we write that code how they look like push the boundary conditions on the right hand side which apply the forces and then when we have a springs for example we have to push some operators to the left hand side as well there is a bit about the enforcing essential bo uh, boundary conditions but i will not uh, talk about that at this uh, in this tutorial so we have those generic functions which you can see they look over here this operator that operator so when i will go over here this is this is depending on these like empty classes i know that it's supposed to do uh, something i put it into the code but i don't know the code itself mm, uh, when i write that code at the point of the writing a code i don't know exactly what those functions do I, this is just empty shell which i expect to uh, be looking more or less like that uh, so the similar thing is then when i assemble the left hand side i will assemble the matrix but in that case is simple uh, i push the set of the operators like before this higher order operators which manage uh, uh, this thing of pushing of base functions and i have a operator which select the stiffness matrix in a certain way and then a operator which calculate the, the stiffness matrix by itself here in addition i i select the integration rule in fact here uh, because i dealing with them I, I i i can change that integration rule i can relax it for the domain i can make it minus one in fact i can do in fact something like that because the gradient has a one order polynomial lower uh, than uh, than the approximation function by itself 
but in order to not differentiate uh, integration of the boundary with the spring and the boundary itself just to being uh, lazy over here I using the same integration rule for everything this is not the super efficient but good enough but sometimes simplicity has has advantage and then once the the it's done um, what is happening over here because I using pipeline manager pipeline manager is responsible of the integrating of the the, the finite elements with the with the discrete manager like pushing the the elements which I have I have these four types of the elements boundary left and right and domain left and right it's pushing to this discrete manager then when I create the KSP solver this KSP solver is when I I, I uh, I I get it from the pipeline manager. It knows already at the my elements. So when I set up the problem uh, uh, through the discrete manager, the matrix is created, and then at that point, uh, what happens? Uh, all the pipelines were put in the motion. So at that point, when I call the setup. The discrete manager calls the MOFM. MOFM iterates for every element. Then in each element, we iterating every over the Gauss point, and then we assemble the matrix. So then, uh, when we we uh, 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 we you call the solver, the problem is solved for D, uh, and then I I put the 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 information about the solution in D back onto the mesh and then with that I can, I can post process and I can check the results. I will not talk about that at that point. Now instead I will focus on the implementation of the boundary conditions. So as I uh, uh, we know at that point we have those empty shells over here we don't know exactly what that mean what what mean what we understand in this particular example what is understood by domain bc and boundary bc before we'll specify what that exactly mean I will first try to implement the boundary conditions which were which represent that I have a body on some springs. Not discrete springs, so there is some density of the springs on some part of the boundary. And then I expect that the user will, will provide this part of the boundary when the springs are applied in the form of the block set uh, as you can see so it uh, um, over here in the qubit that doesn't matter how complex geometry is but he will create the block set one block set or many block sets where he uh, will indicate internal or external surface and then on that surface he, he or she uh, they will provide the, the information about which two attributes. One attribute will be a tangent normal and another tangential stiffness. So, in other words, we'll assume that on the surface we'll have a two springs. One is a normal Kn stiffness, and another is Ks stiffness. But of course, that, that stiffness will depend on the on the on the normal through the surface so let's look how this is implemented and how we doing that so i'm going to the file which is called elastic spring 
and then you can see it over here. Uh, so I create the, the namespace elastic example uh, because I can have somewhere else implementation of st Spring PC, which could be a different one than this this one. So let's create the Spring BC um, template, and then is 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 depending on the cubic BC type. So it's generic, uh, and then uh, and then I have an implementation which uh, works uh, 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 as that. It's a it's just simple function which has only one propose. Is it propose of it is to look loop over all the block sets on the mesh. Block sets is a set of the entities on the mesh, which can have attributes. And those block sets are created by qubit. But if you use the Salome, you have as well the same concept as a uh, as a preprocessor. If you're using Gmesh, this is the same concept. You can ha access the block set with the attributes. So you can, so uh, I try to get the the access to these block sets which are set by the preprocessor, um, um, and then uh, with that um, at hand, I I check if those block set is this particular block set with the certain ID, which I somehow I know that this ID, I, you will see later on how I how I check ID. Um, I check if this block set has a two attributes. If it does not have um, enough information, I throw the error over here that something is wrong. I won't have two attributes. And then I expect that the first attribute is a normal stiffness and another attribute is a tangential stiffness, Kn and Ks, as you can see. In addition, I extract from the block over here uh, what entities, what, what, what handles of the entities are on this part of the block. And then I store it. Uh, in, in, in this in this um, handle, all is as you can see uh, is is returned over here by reference. So this is just function which is has only its purpose. It is to extract the information from the block set which given mesh set ID. So next function which we have is a function which is the operator which is responsible to calculate the reaction force when um, the spring when you know the displacements so how it works so i have a class op flux rhs and then op flux rhs is a is a specialization for elastic example spring bc type so um i know that op flux rhs implementation exists is a template but i don't know exactly what the the implementation of that template is for this newly created chosen by me structure and then i want so then what i simply say over here i want to have implementation for spring bc type which is set on the block set so i expect that i will have some block set and then there will be a spring and then i say that i have this specific implementation for scalar base functions for the field uh, which has a certain dimension so for example uh, our field of the displacement which have dimension in 2d uh, 2 and 3 in 3d because it will have a ux and uy component 
in 3D will field dimension will be three because it will be UX, UY, and UZ component. I expect that, but I can have a generic implementation which is a dimension agnostic. So this is still template. And I choose the certain assembly type, but um, which I don't know uh, at that point what it will be because assembly i don't i don't assemble in that operator anything uh, assembly is through this element operator which i choose to be whatever it is i don't know and then in fact i don't know if this is edge element or face element at that point but i just want to implement that spring and then um if, if that will be needed to be assembled to the the matrix which is on GPUs uh, on GPU, whether it should be assembled into matrix where is on the PETC or special directly to the MOMS format, I don't know what it is. That is handled by element operator, which I am not specific about it. This is chosen in the elastic code as I showed you before. But here I'm very specific that this particular implementation is for Gauss integration only and for scalar base only. So I'm I'm I specialize for base scalar base and I am specialized for the Gauss integration. I expect that I know the block ID where Spring is provided. I choose the field name in this in our particular case that is you, but it could be something else. And then I provide the information about the displacement field at the uh, at the boundary. So this function over here, this 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 variable keeps the information when I have a edge element on that edge, each element has a Gauss point, whatever number it is, I expect that is this, um, this uh, uh, um, in this structure, somehow information is stored about the displacement of those points. This is only scaling that I, I want to multiply whatever I will get by some scalar. I don't, um, this is for convenience, just to give us a flexibility, for example, when we calculate the right hand side for the linear or non linear problem, whether we want to add or subtract the whatever outcome of the integration is. So you can, so this is our class. And then when you, we, when you, when we look um, down, we can see uh, at the particular implementation of that class. Um, so let's look at the implementation of our class. Uh, first of all, it is for uh, left-hand side Let's look at the right hand side. Where is right hand side? Is over here. What you can see, this is the classical constructor over here. Uh, but at that point, I call this function get stiffness, which extract information about the block set and extract and provide the information about normal tangential stiffness. And on top of that, um, decide uh, on on where about the entities where I should perform the integration. So if um, if that is over here, so then that I do integrate the springs only on this part of the boundary when I have a given block set with the given properties. So, uh, in other words, that codes assume that we can have, for example, when we will, when we want to have a block of houses, and then we have a 
two soil, one soil, two, and then we will model a soil as a set of the springs, so we can have a different stiffnesses on the different parts of the boundary. Um, so, um, uh, as I said, the implementation from one is a compact and simple, but handles uh, when you want to have a pathway to impact that our code, what we create is can be applied to the complex problem, has to handle the different zoo of the bone dark conditions. It cannot be a like um, academic exercise. Everything what we create has to have at this practical aspect of it. So then when, when we have someone will come, we can solve the complex problems immediately. Yeah. Or without the necessary um, implementation, which handle the other scenarios. Okay, with that at hand, um, we can look at the operator itself. Uh, I will go briefly over it. So uh, you can you can see over here. I, I take the measure of the element when the when 2D measure is area um, um, area of the element in 3D is a volume of course uh, but this is just measure of the element here I extract the information about the uh, weight weights Here I ex ex get the information about the base functions. Uh, then I get the information about the normal, norm of the normal. And then here I, I, I do operation. I create the projection matrix, ij, which is ni and j. And then, um, so then, uh, then whatever displacement I have, so when I have a boundary and then I have a arbitrary displacement, so P times U, Pij times J, U normal is equal. So Un I will have will be have only components, filter components which are normal to the boundary. I can I can construct another projection matrix which is the ij minus pij, which will extract the tangential components. So, uh, so, so p plus q ij is a unity matrix. So, in fact, I, I, I can decompose the, the displacements onto tangential and normal parts. So then, based on that, I can I can in global coordinates I can construct the the the, the local stiffness matrix TD with the normal and tangential component using a parameters which I extract from the block set. With that at hand, um, I can perform the integration where I assemble. Um, uh, 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 I I. Calculate the parameter alpha over here. Then I calculate the reaction. Then I extract the information about the right hand side local f vector and they assemble to it. I don't intend to go to the details over here. That how how to write the operator is explained in the in, uh, other parts of the muffin. You can find the tutorials about that. Um, but this is in essence how it will look like. Of course, that operation is not generic because in fact, over here, I do a little bit cheating because I assume that the normal is a constant per element, but it's a variant of this function, normal at the Gauss points, when you can generalize that implementation that uh, that we can have a spring which has on the element which is given by higher order polynomial. However, this uh, this is example, and then I just don't want to overcomplicate the problem at that point. It's good enough 
to uh, present. Um, it's, it's giving enough flexibility. I simply assume that the boundary where we apply uh, springs is composed from the segment stride segments. It's a good approximation for most of the cases of the reality. Uh, the same story is for integrating the stiffness. I will skip that at that point. Uh, if, uh, if you have a questions, please write. I can make a separate a talk about details of this implementation. Okay, so at that point, I created a special type of the spring BC boundary condition. I implement the extractor, which extracts the information from the block set um, over here. I have specializations of the operators for Gauss integration and scalar base, but template still templatized field dimension so it can work in 3D and 2D and it can work for the different assemblies. So it's a general uh, in some sense. But now I have to implement so-called factories, how I have a now boundary right hand side, and I have a boundary left hand side. I have to create the factories which push those operators into left and right hand side. But you, as I said, we have a generic implementation in the sense that we have uh, many block sets and then with the different boundary conditions and the, the, uh, different spring stiffness. And then I want to put a uh, push that thing. So this uh, add flux RHS is a factory which push the, which supposed to work for my spring boundary conditions. Which are implemented uh, in this file. So this it's working uh, with the with the spring uh, BC, this factory. And then how this factory works? So I have a two variants of the factory for left hand right hand side and the left hand side. Um, please notice that function this, this factory cannot be constructed. But it has a, fun, a static function at which I can execute. And then I, I, I choose the pipeline. So this is pipeline, which is boundary H, RHS pipeline or boundary LHS left and right hand side pipeline. So when we have a system of equations, A X is equal to F, F is right hand side and L is left-hand side. So when I talk right-hand side, and I, 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 I mean that I assemble to right-hand right -hand side LHS some vector, and when I uh, mean LHS, I, I, I understand that I assemble something into the uh, matrix, okay? So what happens over here now? You can you can see how it works. This is a simple function. So I have a, a, so this function is expect that the user somehow um, you who implement the code will provide that function with the values of the displacements at the Gauss points. that um, you have, uh, you know how to calculate that thing, you. you. You choose block name, so for example, spring. And then what will happen, here we have a lambda function, which works like that, that you have a provided the vector of the block sets, which are, 
has this particular name and for and then for every block set uh, which now you know the idea of the block set you execute you push the operator so in other words how it works so when i have a let's say i have a body I have a spring one. Here I have a spring two, let's say. So for every block set, I will push the operator, which is my this specialization for spring BC type block set, which you have seen before. Okay. If someone try to will try to use another BC type like side set or node set, um, uh, I will uh, code will will print the error that is not implemented. So it's like prepare for the extension where they will be needed. And here this this is the the Moffin function for mesh set manager, which is part of the Moffin interface, which is ask, asking for base. So every every block set which starts with the spring in our particular case um, it's return the vector um, of the id of the block set and for this block set uh, for for this vector we extract the information and push the operators with the which calculating those springs okay we don't know a priori how many those block sets will be it could be hundreds of them, the info uh, that will be pushed in the automatic way, and then every uh, 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 for every block set will be performed this integration. Those block sets can even in, uh, overlap if this is needed. Code is in that sense is generic. Okay, so this is the whole implementation of the new type of the boundary condition, but. But you, you, when you will look carefully into Elastic example, you will not find um, the information about spring boundary conditions over here. The, that you will have to look into this natural boundary BC. So, but before we will go, uh, so uh, 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 there, let's look at the natural uh, boundary conditions. Okay. So, in in our case, uh, we don't have in elastic example when we select this boundary BCs. We don't have really any specific about here. We this is in fact the set of the different boundary conditions. So we don't have to implement any operator which is associated with our boundary BC, which we're using in the example. We only implement for it a factory, which you can see over here. And here we have a add operator, but inside of the factory, we decide about two types of the boundary conditions. Op force, which is a, a type of the op flux boundary condition, which is implementation for natural for, force mesh sets. And that is core implementation of the pressures and forces, which is located in the force. And then another uh, type you can see, this is our specialization from elastic example spring, spring BC type block set boundary condition, which is, I show you um, uh, a few minutes before how this is implemented. And then in the art, in this factory, I just say that I want to push uh, the, the, the operators for um, uh, those two cases. So I execute this add flux to pipeline, add for op force, 
end up spring um, uh, boundary condition for those those specific operators which you have here which i have a this is implemented in core and this is implemented by us in the example in addition in order to calculate the reaction force for the uh, for the spring you can i i create uh, the uptr uh, this is the matrix double which stores the as i said the uh, before the value of the displacements on the bound area at the gauss points on the edge this is edge element um, i push the operator which is responsible for evaluating those values at the gauss points and storing it in here and i passing that uh, to this factory which push the operators for the spring plots block sets doesn't matter how many of them is there um, so and exactly the same thing happens from the left hand side so in other words when i will like to add the new type of the boundary conditions i will open that file and then add the more elements over here and add the functions here but the main code will be will stay unchanged so now how so then you can see now how this is used it's used in the simple way that when i go um, somewhere over here i have a boundary bc I created this uh, element. And then over here, I have a boundary RHSBC. I have add flux to pipeline. And I have a specialization for this boundary BC. And this boundary BC specialization is implemented over here. So um, we exploiting the uh, properties of the specialization. Um, the interesting thing over here is that um, we have only specialization for the Gauss integration over here. Um, uh, that is the case definitely for a spring, because you can see when I implementing my operator over here, I a priori decide that is only implementation for a spring. So in in the case that user will choose the different type of the integration over here that compiler will trigger the error so only way to remove that error will be um, to implement specialization for different integration type or use in the same code um two different integration types uh, which is as well possible so part of the operators can have um uh, 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 different integration. How this is works, you can see it over here, for example. Uh, um, this is the problem where I have um, a matrix with the inclusion. Uh, you can see over here uh, extremely coarse mesh. Coarse mesh is, is um, that. Uh, uh, <clears throat> provided by uh, six node uh, triangles um, so I can project I can represent the um, geometry of in inclusion by quadratic functions but to solve the problem I using the M8 or ninth order polynomials so as a result uh, despite the, my mesh is coarse I getting a quite nice and smooth uh, a solution of course without the, any problem i can generalize that problem to be a, a much more um, a, a complex i can put the thousand inclusions and the same code in fact if i will do it in 3d it will work in this particular case you probably guessed from the deformation that inclusion is hard and matrix is soft, uh, soft. So thank you for your uh, attention.